so much. I am so excited though to be able to share our first online kids service with you. I am working from home. I'm stuck at home just like you're stuck at home. Um, this is where I work during the week. Um, my dog is in the corner. My kids are outside. You might hear them in the background from time to time. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to invite Pastor Kenner to pray for us like he always does at the beginning of each service. And I really hope you enjoy this time. Good morning, guys. We just wanted to take a minute and say we love you guys. We miss you guys. We're praying for you. We're excited to begin this week sharing with you guys just a small kids ministry uh, video where you guys are going to be able to worship the Lord together, where you guys are going to hear a teaching. But before we do that, I just wanted to take a minute to pray with you guys. So as we would normally do on Sunday morning, if you guys are watching, put your hands up in the air, wiggle your fingers, hands together, hands in our laps. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you bless these kids today as they hear your word, that they would come to know that you love them, that you care for them, that you're sovereign, and that you've invited them to participate in life in your kingdom. And so we pray that you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Pastor Kenner. So today we are going to hear about a time when Jesus talked to people about worrying and why we don't ever have to worry. But before we get into the story, I have invited Mr. Ryan to lead you all in your memory verse for the week. Over to you, Mr. Ryan. Hey guys, it's good to see you. I'm here to teach you the verse this week. I'm in a new house. Hopefully you can hear me. I kind of live in like the woods now. So I can talk and sound crazy outside and no one can hear me. So the verse this week is from Matthew. So that's the first book in the New Testament. So run and go get your Bible. If you don't have it, okay, once you have it, open it up. First book of the New Testament. If you've gone to Mark, you're one book too far. If you've gone to Luke, you're way too far. Go back, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. So once you're there, we're only gonna learn the first little part, but we'll read it all the way through right now. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we're just going to learn that first part, the first two verses. So let's say just the first couple parts. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I have to be honest. I was learning this verse earlier and I came across that word hallowed. Never heard that word before. I've said it in this prayer, but I could, I, I thought for sure it was pronounced hallowed. And I was going up to Hannah, my wife, and I said, babe, there's this word in this verse that says, hallowed be your name. And she says, that's not how you say it. So I had to look it up on Google and it says, it's pronounced hallowed. So if you've ever made that mistake, you're not alone. It's hallowed and it kind of means to be made holy. So you can quiz your parents. You know what hallow would mean? They might say no, and you can say it's like to be made holy. So that off the record that I don't know how to pronounce things. Let's try to learn this. I did a few hand signals about how we might be able to remember this. So the first part is easy. We're gonna say, pray then like this. Can you do that? Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven. So our Father in heaven. Let's start from the beginning. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed. So this, if you put your hand up like this, you're gonna do two fingers, swipe across. That means holy or hallowed in sign language. So we're gonna say, hallowed be your name. Right there, can you do that? Hallowed be your name. If anyone knows sign language, you can send me a video of you doing this whole song in sign language. Or sorry, this whole verse in sign language. But for now, we need to try to do just a couple pieces. So, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
The next part's your kingdom come. So like a crown, your kingdom come, your will be done. That's another sign language thing. I looked this up. The Google's the best. Your will be done. So let's do that again. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Let's start from the beginning. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And the next part is on earth as it is in heaven. So we're going to point down for earth as it is in heaven. So the same two fingers. Let's put it all together. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ooh, we got it. One more time. Let's do it. Matthew 6, 9, and 10. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, one time, super speed. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ooh, good job. Okay, so practice that. And next week, we're going to build on it. So next on our list is worship. I miss singing with our church family on a Sunday morning, but I do hope you sing along as we sing a song that comes straight from the Bible, from the Word of God. of his pasture it is he who made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture shout for joy to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him with joyful songs no of his pasture it is he who made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture shout for joy to the lord of the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him with joyful songs no through three. Wow, I wish I could have seen you all. I bet you did a great job singing that song. Now it's time for us to transition to our Bible story for the day. Now it's story time. Our story today comes from the Jesus Book Story Bible and it's called The Singer, and it comes from the Sermon on the Mount. So, I'm gonna read the story, and I'm gonna show you the pictures, 
and hopefully you can follow along if you have a Jesus Storybook Bible at home. So, The Singer. This is where we're reading from. Whenever Jesus went. Let's start that over. It doesn't say that. Let's try again. Wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people, sad people, and worried people. Lots of them worrying about all lots of things. What if we don't have enough food, they would think, or clothes, or suppose we run out of money? What if there isn't enough and everything goes wrong and we won't be all right? What then? When Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and he talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From where they sat, they could see the blue lake glittering below them and little fishing boats coming in from the night's catch. The spring air was flesh, fresh and clear. See those birds over there, Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking at seeds along the stony path. Where do they get their food? Perhaps they have pantries all stocked up, cabinets full of food. Everyone laughed. Who's ever seen a bird with a bag of groceries? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and he feeds them. Do you see the bird with the shopping cart? And what about these wildflowers? Everyone looked. Around them were flowers growing, anemones, daisies, pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or do they go to work every day so they can buy them? Do they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on a dress? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendor. Not even a king is that well dressed. Did you see the flower wearing a dress? They had never met a king, but as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples, and golds, they felt a great burden lift from their hearts. They could not imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than birds, more important than flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers, and he loves to look after you too. Jesus knew that God would always love and watch over the world he had made, everything in it, birds, flowers, trees, animals, everything, and most of all, his children. Even though people had forgotten, the birds and the flowers hadn't forgotten. They still knew their song, it was the song all of God's creation had sung to him from the very beginning. It was the song people's hearts were made to sing. God made me. He loves us. He is very pleased with us. God made us. He loves us. He is very pleased with us. It is why Jesus had come into the world to sing them that wonderful song to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life so that God's children could remember it and join in and sing it too. And that's our story for today. And now Mr. David Choate is going to teach a little lesson about our story. Hey kids, my name is Mr. David, 
And uh, Courtney has asked me to share a little bit with you today. And so I'm going to talk to you about Matthew 6 and uh, a story where Jesus takes his followers up on a, a mountainside, a grassy mountain slope, and uh, he talked to them about all sorts of great things. And I always like this story because I like being out in nature myself. I love the plants and the, the trees and the flowers and the animals. Uh, one of my favorite spots around here is to go up on the table rocks. Uh, I love going out there because I can see wild turkeys, deers, rabbits, all the wild flowers. Now, if you're watching online right now with us, maybe on YouTube or Facebook, uh, I'd love it if you shared in the comment section some of your favorite things to see out in nature, some of the animals you like to see, some of the plants you like to see. Uh, so just go ahead and share those in the comment section. If you're not a great typer and you're watching uh, with mom and dad or an older brother and sister, uh, ask them to type in the comment section some of your favorite plants or animals because that's where we're doing this service. Uh, is for you guys and we love to hear from you. So I'm going to give you five seconds to enter in some comments starting right now. One, two, three. That was a quick five. Now I've got some handy dandy notes here because I'm not great at remembering things. So every now and again you might, you know, see me look at this. Um, but yeah, Jesus takes his followers and he, he goes up on this mountainside into nature and he talks to him about a lot of things. But one of the things he talks about that I think is really important for us right now is worry. Um, and with everything going on right now, it, it sure seems like there are a lot of reasons for us to be worried. Um, worry is, it's a hard word to explain sometimes, but it's kind of that feeling that you get inside that things are just going to turn out bad, that things aren't going to work out good. And, and it's easy to think, especially right now with coronavirus, uh, that there's a lot of reasons to be worried. School has been canceled. We have to stay in our, our homes. People are getting in fights in stores over toilet paper. And it just, it seems like a really crazy time. And yet in our story in Matthew 6, Jesus tells us not to worry. In fact, this is what he says. He says, uh, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, and about your body, what you will wear. Uh, and it's amazing to think about. Those words are amazing, and yet we go, I don't know. It, it sure seems like I should worry with everything going on. And so Jesus tells us, well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about two things. One of the things he wants us to think about is an animal. And the other thing he wants us to think about is a plant. And I'm curious if you remember from the story that Mrs. Courtney read, which plant and which animal Jesus tells us to think about, right? He wanted us to think about an animal and a plant. So I'm going to give you another five seconds in the comment section to see if you remember what plant and what animal Jesus tells us to think about. So I'll give you another five seconds. Maybe I'll try to slow it down this time. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Again, ask your parents to help in that comment section. Uh, if you're not the best uh, at, at typing or, you know, whatever it's called, texting, thumbing, you know, on your, on your device there. So here it is. The animal that Jesus tells us to think about is a bird, and the plant Jesus tells us to think about is a flower. Uh, and here's why. Little birds, they're not big and strong, and they can't, you know, protect themselves very well, and, and they can't build barns where they can store up all of their food. But Jesus says, those little birds, God makes sure that they're fed each and every day. He makes sure that they don't get go hungry, so we shouldn't worry because God will take care of us. He loves us even more than those little birds that are taken care of so well by him. And the flowers, Jesus says, are beautiful. God has clothed them in beauty. God has put on them all of the colors of the rainbow, the reds and the blues and the purples and the violets and the yellows and the reds, 
all of them. God has made those flowers so beautiful. In fact, Jesus says, they're even more beautiful than the great King Solomon, the richest and wisest man who has ever lived, who had the most amazing clothes and jewelry and crowns and gold and all of it. And yet not even he was clothed in as much beauty as those flowers. And so Jesus says, if God will clothe his flowers in such incredible beauty, won't he cover you in his beauty? Not just now, but forever in eternity with him. We don't have to worry because God loves us as much and even more than the flowers and the birds. And I want to have us think about three things before we end this teaching today. Three reasons why we don't have to worry. The first, we don't have to worry because God will turn our bad things out for good. Things happen to us in this life. Things go on around us. Things that hurt, things that make us sad, things that make us anxious inside. And yet, God says that he can take those things and use them to do good things in our heart. God hates the bad things in this world. He hates those things that cause cause pain and suffering. And yet he's so amazing and so big and his love is so never ending that he can use them to do good things in our life. Second, we don't have to worry because our good things can never be taken away from us. One of the amazing truths of the Bible is that God has brought us into his family. Because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, God has brought us into his forever family, adopted us as sons and daughters. And that is a a truth, a reality that can never be taken away from us. We will spend forever in eternity with God. And that's a reason why we should never worry. It can't be taken away. And finally, the last reason that we don't have to worry is that the best things in this life are still to come. They're still coming. God has told us in the Bible that a day is coming where all things will be made new, a new heaven and a new earth, and everything that causes pain, everything that makes us cry, everything that causes us to worry, those things will be gone forever. And so even if right now in a moment there's something bad that that seems like it's taking over and, and it's right there and it will never go away, God promises it will go away. And the day is coming in in heaven where all of those bad things are gone forever. The Bible gives us all of those great reasons to think about and to ponder and to go, I don't have to worry. God loves me and he's going to take care of me just like those flowers and those birds. Um, And so that's good news. That makes me happy inside. It takes that awful kind of icky feeling of worry and it shoves it aside and instead fills me with hope and joy uh, and just an understanding that God will be with me no matter what I face. I want to thank you for letting me share this teaching with you today and I really want to thank you for just being you, for being the awesome young men and women that you are. We all love you so much and we miss you and we can't wait to see you again when we can gather again at at church and see each other at Rogue Valley Fellowship. But until that day comes, whether it's a few weeks or a few months, whatever it may be, we're going to keep bringing you videos like this one. Um, Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. So uh, have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. We're going to close today's service by just saying our memory verse one final time with Mr. Ryan. Okay, back for a quick reminder on the verse. We're learning the Lord's Prayer right now. It's from Matthew 6, 9 through 13. So it says, the first part goes, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so learn that first part, and next week we're going to learn even more. All right, hope you guys are doing well. Miss you. Well... We made it. We made it to the end of our first ever online kids service. I hope you all enjoyed this time together. I am going to pray for us before we close. Jesus, thank you for each of these kids. Thank you for your love and care for them. 
Thank you that because of Jesus, you are pleased with us, you love us, and you care for us. Thank you for making us. I pray that as we learn about your love, that we would be encouraged to love others with the same kind of love with which you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful week. And if you wanna do an activity page, ask your parents. There's one attached to the email I sent out earlier and they can print that out for you. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Ha, just kidding. I have one more thing. I almost forgot. I wanna hear from you guys. I want to know what you're thankful for. Send me a short video just telling me whether it's something that happened in your week or if it's a person. I wanna hear from you who or what you're thankful for. And then I wanna take those videos and maybe put them at the beginning of next week's online kids service so you guys can see each other and start to hear from each other and not just us adults. That's it. Okay, now go and enjoy your day.